This is episode 78. I'm excited to bring you a special conversation I had a chance to have on the Launchpad podcast. In this conversation, we explore belief systems, mindset, the question of did you see the gorilla, and much more of what it takes to shift the script. I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to Alive by Design. My name is Blake Mallon, and we're here to bring you inspiring people, principles, and practices to help you wake up, move toward your meant to, and feel fully alive. Open your mind, and let's dive in. Hey guys, before you listen to the podcast, I just wanted to say I really appreciate you being here. If you want to catch these episodes happening live, where you often can ask real-time questions or maybe even get featured on the show, make sure we're connected on Instagram, at Blake Mallon, and on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash blakemallon.page, as I'd love to see you there. Love you guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay sane, and enjoy the episode. Now, I'm really excited to talk with this guy. I've worked with him in the past. He is definitely one of the most intelligent individuals that I've met, definitely well-spoken, and he's going to exhibit this for you this evening. He made his first million under the age of 25. Since then, he's done that numerous times over. He's a global brand builder, and I believe he's done over $2 billion with those businesses. He's a podcaster, fellow kin there as well with a live by design and he has a great series called walk with me that I strongly suggest that you check out. And we used to work together in live and in Vi, which spans about 10 years of my life. And I've learned so much from you. And now you've moved on to be the president of prove it. Not a bad intro. Blake Mallon. Welcome to the program. Uh, I love it. Well, Jason, thanks for having me. I, I, I love when you reached out and then looking forward to this conversation. So great to reconnect. Yes, absolutely. So I'm trying to think the last time that I saw you, it's been a few years. And in those few years, some big things have happened, or should I say there has been a shift. Now, this is something that you've spoken about before in the past, but you had the opportunity to do a TED Talk. And that was the real reason why I wanted to bring you on, because I believe this is such an important message for people to hear. Explain to me, number one, how did the TED Talk come about and why is it so important for you to help people shift the script and what is that script? Uh, I love it. Well, obviously, as you know, it's a a topic I'm excited to talk about. Um, It's interesting because I I think the TED Talk was probably about two years ago now, uh, maybe a little more. um, But you're right with everything that's going on in the world. um, The world is in a state of shift and um, for some reason, the message seems to be uh, picking up even more traction today. I just got the alert, the Google alert last week. Uh, I guess it passed a million views last week, which was crazy. So it's it's awesome to see a, a message that I'm super passionate about um, continue to you know make an impact and and resonate maybe even more today than than even it did a couple of years ago. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question, it was a really cool experience. Um, so I had a chance to get invited to stand on the red circle. Uh, and I'm sure you're like me, Jason, like I'm a fan of Ted talks. Like I, you know, I'm a learner. I, I love to dive into ideas and inspiration. Um, and I definitely have always used kind of the Ted platform as a way to go drop in and kind of get some inspired thoughts. So I've been a, a long time fan. Uh, so when I got the invitation, it was definitely an instant yes. Um, it was uh, through the TEDx community platform, actually out here in Los Angeles through the Watts Empowerment Center, um, which is kind of a special place. Justin Mayo over there does an amazing job. Um, and the entire organization, you know, every single day as a nonprofit is, is all about um, really leaning into inner city youth, um, like deep inner city here in L.A., and providing them with the right environment, mentors, you know, really education to kind of get out of maybe where they came from and and where they want to go. So the whole kind of theme of specifically that day that Ted was putting on was really speaking to the next generation. Um, And I had some kind of friends of friends and relationships that, that threw my name out there. And yeah, got, got the phone call um, to come and, and uh, stand on the red dot at the Watson Empowerment Center as part of TED, uh, which was crazy because I, uh, I think they only gave, they gave me like two weeks notice. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I've met some people that have delivered like TED Talks that have spent like a year <laughs> prepping, prepping right. for it. 
Um, but it, it definitely was a message that came um, fairly naturally. It, it wasn't a new idea for me. Um, it, it was actually the contrary. It was really a, an idea that had been with me for you know maybe two decades at the time. And it was really a reflection of, you know, kind of my my life story. Um, and it was an awesome opportunity to be able to kind of share that on on a platform. And it's been crazy to see the response. But anyway, to answer your question high level, you know, what's the the TED talk about without going into all of the details? It's it's really about why are supposed to no longer works um, and how to make a shift away from supposed to, to what I call in the conversation, a a meant to. And you might be saying, well, what the heck does that even mean? But the reality is, I think everybody can relate to at some point in our life or some parts of our life, we we find ourselves kind of chasing this supposed to, right? You know, it starts really, really young. We know we're supposed to go to school and supposed to get good grades and supposed to go to college and supposed to get a job and supposed to meet the right person and supposed to get married and supposed to have kids and supposed to buy the house and supposed to get the mortgage and like this long list of supposed to even down to things we have to do, like supposed to be, you know, a man, supposed to be a woman, right? Supposed to be a good partner, supposed to. And we have found, at least in my experience, we spend so much of our life kind of trying to constantly live up to this giant prescription, if you will, um, or what I call the script for short, um, of other people's expectations, right, of, of what we think we're supposed to do, um, constantly living in a perception of what we think other people think we're supposed to be. And it really is creating awareness around that and then, and then trying to get people inspired to make a shift away from trying to meet others' expectations and really trying to get in touch with kind of what they're meant to do and what they're meant to be. So that's kind of the, the premise of the talk and like where it came from, how to make the shift. But yeah, it was a, was a super awesome experience for sure. Oh, that's awesome. So what we're going to try to accomplish here for the listener is potentially get them unstuck, get them off script, or at least on to another one and then living on purpose. Okay, we're going to do that together. I love that. that it's going to be an awesome podcast. Let's do it. <laughs> So I'm really interested in regards to this script. And I know by being in network marketing, for a lot of people having a home-based business off the script, even though more and more so we're heading into this gig economy. Actually, we're here. Okay, we're firmly planted within the gig economy. Now, it used to be everyone had one job that paid all the bills and everything was gravy, right? And... Now people have usually a job and then they have a side hustle and people are happy to talk about their side hustle. Now, if you go back to the 60s or 70s and Jim goes across the family fence into the other backyard and tells them that he's picked up another job, they're thinking maybe he has a drinking or gambling problem or he's in financial trouble. (laughs) What is it? What was the alarm that went off in your head that you realized that this script wasn't for you and you had to do something different? Uh, I I love what you're saying. And Jason, I'll even say 60s and 70s, for sure, that would have been the reaction. But like, I felt that was even the reaction when I was first getting started in the, you know, call it network marketing, affiliate marketing, you know, social selling, social retail has so many names today, you know, community based marketing. Um, And, you know, I, I remember, you know, getting that same reaction when I got started, you know, 21 years ago. Um, you know, I graduated college early, was definitely going down the kind of traditional path. Um, and I remember graduating from a you know top university with all these degrees and the cum laude, you know, honors and, you know, then telling people when everybody asked me, like, what are you going to do? You know, thinking I was going to go to some law school or, or some, you know, extended education or take some internship or job. And my answer was, well, no, I'm going to go full time in a home based business. And I mean, I, I remember people literally thought I had lost it. Like I, I can still visually remember the facial expressions of my family, extended family and like friends, parents of like, what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and yeah, so I mean, even go back 20 years, uh, you know, I, I think there was a, a big or larger resistance. But like you said, fast forward to today, there might be, still be some of that lack of education or reaction. Um, but with where the world's at today, I think there definitely is a shift and we can kind of, kind of speak to that. Um, but I'll, I'll put a pin in that one because I think you asked my personal wake up call or my personal shift. 
yeah, um, yeah it, it happened. I, I, it kind of goes when I was following that traditional path. So, you know, and, and I grew up in a super conservative upbringing. So my, my father was a lifetime um, law enforcement, right? So a cop. Um, my mom, a lifetime educator. Okay. So teacher, counselor, and principal. Um, people always, you know, laugh. It's not meant to be a joke at like my pain of having a cop and a principal as parents, but like it was super by the book. And I felt, I don't know that my parents ever really put this pressure on me. Um, I don't think they ever said it directly, but for some reason I felt that if I wasn't like a lawyer or a doctor, I was a failure, right? Or some sort of equivalent profession. So something in my, you know, youth put me on autopilot. Like I don't like blood, right? That, that I want to stay away. So the medical thing was out. So like, I'm going to go be a lawyer. And that was the path that I was on. That was what I, my degree is political science, public law, psychology. And I, I remember very specifically, there was a um, summer of my sophomore year in college where I was interning for a district attorney, right? All summer. So when all my friends were out surfing, out having fun, right? Out enjoying the summer break, like you're probably meant to do right during that time. I'm sitting there in like my, you know, cheesy JC pennies, like tie, white shirt, like every day, filing folders for the DA. Um, miserable, not having fun, but telling myself in my head, like, well, this is the price you have to pay, right? This is, you know, um, this is how it works. And uh, yeah, the, the turning point for me was I had a, a, a mentor figure um, that I would talk to every now and then for counsel, um, probably sensed a little bit of angst. And he just said a really simple question to me. He said, well, Blake, if, if you feel this way, like, why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. um, and it was that moment, like that simple, simple question was like a lightning strike or lightning bolt moment for me. Because in that moment, I didn't have a good answer. The only real answer I had was, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. Right. That was the wake up call. Because that was the first time in my life, I was 19 years in, where I realized, wow, I'm running motions, following a script for no better reason other than it's what I've been told I was supposed to do. Not ever really checking in, like, is this what I, I want to do? Is this what I'm passionate about? Does this excite me? Does this align with my gifts? Is yes. this really where I'm meant to, right? So, you know, for me, it was that wake up call. And, and I don't know about you, you've interviewed a lot of entrepreneurs out there. I, I found that at some point in life, a lot of people hit a point, whether it's a question or someone external or just a, a realization, or they go through kind of a, a moment of pain where you realize, man, right, we got to break free from this script per se, and really start being true to ourselves and really start discovering like who we're meant to be. Um, so right. that was the starting point for me, not the end, but that was the starting point. Yeah, well, Wayne Dyer has this clip that is always making the rounds on Facebook and social media talking about if you could do anything, if you just follow your passion, get paid for it, what would you do? And mm -hmm. then why don't you do it, right? Is that script is so strong. And I guess a big part of that would have to be fear, fear of what other people are going to think, fear of failure, fear of going against the norm, all those different types of things. Could you speak on that fear or the elements of fear that you feel might stop people from getting off that script? Yeah. I mean, I think number one, guys, it's it's natural, right? So um, I can speak to fear, Jason, you're asking because I've been through it. I've lived it. I still live it. Um, and I, I think if you ask anyone who's authentic and, and going to give you a, a transparent answer, like, you know, the battle of fear is something we all face every day on different levels, right? And in different circumstances. Um, and there's different maybe moments of our life where we got to learn to overcome, right, certain fears. Um, if you're speaking in the case of like my experience, or maybe to some of you out there that are entrepreneurs, right? Like, let's say you are an entrepreneur, or right now in this, you know, dramatic state of shift around the world, you have that like seed inside of you, or like, maybe now's the time to kind of make a leap or do something on my own or do something different. We are seeing across the world, right? Not just here in the States or Canada, but entrepreneurship right now, it is rising, right? The gig economy is inspiring it. And, and I do believe tangent, I believe right now the world needs entrepreneurs more so than ever to solve the new problems that we have today. So, you know, maybe if I narrow the question down to entrepreneurship, you're going to go through all the things, Jason, you just said, right? I mean, those are some of the most common, um, probably one of the, the first things you go through and we all go through is, is a fear of rejection. 
right? And, and that can manifest itself in different ways. Like you take a step and someone says no, right? You get excited. Someone tells you you're crazy, right? You try to go outside the box and immediately there's people around you that, that try to tell you why you got to go back in. Um, and that's a natural part of the process, this overall kind of fear of, you know, what will other people think? What if I'm wrong, right? What if somebody says no? Um, and it's normal, right? And everybody has to go through it. Um, and it's okay to have that, that kind of have some maybe self-doubt or, or questions, right? But you guys, I believe a shift is you got to look at it and see, that's just a world's way of testing you to make sure you have the desire and have the resolve in the direction that you're going. Because if you're going to get knocked out of the box from your first no, or someone saying you're crazy, or you know someone saying you should go back, that just means you don't have the desire level high enough, right? The passion level high enough that you can call it maybe in some cases the pain, the pain that you're in high enough to really propel yourself in the direction that you want. So it, to me, it's a test and that's a shift, right? It's, it's a shift, right? It, do I want this bad enough? Am I excited enough? Do I want to change the state that I'm in bad enough to really make a shift and go through that layer of fear when it comes to rejection? You know, fear of failure, I think hits most of us. That's a huge one for me, right? right. Failure. Uh, when it- Success magazine. I uh, remember those used to circulate back in the Vi days and mm-hmm. I remember one of the CDs, he was trying to put together a show to have people that have done incredibly well in life to talk about their failures. And he said it was by far the hardest show to book out of them all because people don't want to talk about how much they suffered sometimes and how many mistakes that they made. They just want to be seen as being the resilient individual. I guess for the regular person, that would be just, you know, Facebook always being happy and everyone looking like they're happy and not knowing that, you know, sometimes people are crumbling uh, in the background. And in your last podcast that I listened to, the Walk With Me series, huh? uh, you dove deep into failure and fear as well. And I thought it was really interesting, this take, the fear of perfection. Mm-hmm. That is in itself just a perfect nugget. Like that's a, that's a gem to pull out. The fear of just waiting for that perfect time, the perfect place, the perfect person to maybe do it with to maybe sometimes realize the perfect time is just right now? First, I love that you said CDs. You just took me back to like, we used to have like, (laughs) we got those once a month, right? Once a (laughs) month, Success Magazine would send us a CD. Like, oh, I got my one CD for the month. (laughs) Now we got like anything we want on demand, one click away anytime in any language is crazy. Um, And, uh, you know, the, the perfection conversation that's a lie that we perfectionists, guilty right. as right. charred, use to rationalize why we're not doing what we know deep down we need to do. Mm-hmm. It's a lie. And you guys, I say this, and, and this is going to hurt some of you that are like me, yeah. right? Because I am that person, Jason, like the hardcore achiever, the hardcore perfectionist, right? The person that spent you know, a lot of time in my life using, okay, well, if I'm going to do something, I got to give it a hundred percent, right? If, if I'm going to start, I got to get it to, to perfect, right? If we're going to do this, we can't begin right until all the ducks are in the row. How many of you guys out there that end up watching or listening to this have been guilty of, right? Knowing you need to do something, really wanting to do something, even maybe knowing the steps, even maybe taking some of the steps, but you haven't pressed go. You haven't pressed launch. You haven't ripped the bandaid off because you have some version in your head of, well, it's not good enough yet. It's not perfect yet. I need it to be just right yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and a big shift, we're talking about kind of mental shifts, I, I guess, Jason. A big shift for me was exactly what I just said. Shifting the, oh, if, if I'm going to do it, it's got to be 100%. If I'm going to do it, it's got to be right. It, it's not worth starting if it's not perfect. Like all that internal dialogue, shifting all of that to saying, you know what? All of that is just a lie I'm telling myself to keep me from doing what I know I should be doing. And to make the shift that, you know what, it's not about perfection. It's about progress because the reality is nothing is ever perfect at the beginning. It's about taking the step, reviewing and adapting and adjusting to take another step, reviewing, adapting and adjusting to take another step and, you know, making that shift to, to anything you're doing, a business, a career, an idea, pursuing progress over perfection. 
Um, but yeah, that little shift does help with, you know, the fear and does help with getting someone moving, getting someone going in that direction. And, and uh, sorry for all the perfectionists out there, but hey, it's the truth. Right. You're getting in your own way. <laughs> Nothing's perfect. You'd rather begin, you know, start. It's going to be bad before it's good and good before it's great. Um, you know, and, and that that mentality, that mindset has definitely um, benefited me when I was able to make that shift. Right. It's all about being a catalyst. Now, here is a quote from a mutual friend of ours, Nick Sarnicola. Uh-huh. Hey, excuses oh, are well disguised lies. Yep. I always like that. And failure as you said in your last podcast, the only way you really achieve it is to just not begin, mm-hmm. right? So the, the only way an individual truly fails is just to never give it a shot or to never take that step. Yep. And that's like reframing failure, right? So like going back to a, a fear of failure. Um, and again, that's a broad bucket, but in that, I know we all face different versions of it, right? So a fear of failure may be like, ah, I'm afraid I'm going to make a mistake, right? I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up. I'm afraid I'm not going to do it right, right? I'm afraid, I'm afraid that I'm going to give it my all and it's not going to work out as planned. Newsflash for everybody. Yes, right? <laughs> yes, 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 and yes. So let's just, let's just address the obvious. Yes, you're going to make mistakes. Yes, you're going to you're going to do something and it's not going to work out as planned. Yes, right? It's never going to be perfect. Yes, and you know what? That is 100% true for 100% of people. That is just the way life works, right? So being afraid of failing or messing up and letting that fear keep you from even beginning, the whole paradox of that mindset is you just failed. Because the failure is in letting the fear keep you from even making progress in that direction. So the very thing you are afraid of is actually leading you to do the exact thing, right? That is that fear. So you got to shift it. You got to shift it. And it goes toward, again, talking about progress, um, removing the the fear. And a lot of it has to do with just the conversation we have in our head. Like you said, you know, Nick's quote is amazing when it comes to the excuses or the self-talk or the story we tell ourselves, right? How do we make a shift that doesn't just keep us where we are, but how do we have an internal conversation that moves us to where we want to go? And I think that's the game. Mm -hmm. And that fear of taking that first step, when it comes around time that we're taking our last final steps, the regret is a very big part of that fear. The fear that you never did the things that you wanted to do uh, and how horrible it must be to live your whole life following that script that you were told was made for you. And then to realize like, wow, there are so many different directions that I could have gone. And that I'm sure is probably the catalyst for you in regards to wanting to get people to live in the now. And actually uh, live was a big part of that it was all about the moments. Yep. It was all about the right now and Testament <laughs> I will be going to my deathbed, even though it didn't go to where we wanted to go. And, you know, coronavirus impacted that big time in regards to being a, a travel company. Uh, but there are going to be things that I go to my deathbed, most definitely thinking about that I experienced with you and a whole bunch of other wonderful individuals that were a part of that project, by the way. So thank you. I love it. You're giving me goosebumps and chills. You know, I, I think at the end of the day, and I know you and I both share this philosophy, it's kind of one of the things that brought us together and let us work together is, you know, at the end of the day, memories and moments is all we're going to have. Like, you know, if, 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 and again, not to get morbid, but if you do fast forward, you know, everything you have, you eventually give away. And that's an interesting thing to realize. Like, Everything you have in your life, you will eventually give away. Every person you have in your life, right, you'll eventually lose. You know, and then that's just the truth with enough time uh, and, and you cast the, the, you know, the calendar, the timeline out long enough. That's the truth for everything. And, you know, wherever you're at in that milestone, in that timeline, at the end of the day, all we're left with is the moments or the memories, right? of a life well lived. Um, and that's something that, that I try to live by and try to remind myself of to create and put intention into creating those type of memories and moments and valuing them, right? And looking back and actually making sure the ones we've had, we've all had looking back in the past, 
that you don't just forget about them. Like so, so many of us are so focused on the next thing, right? What comes today, tomorrow, next week, next year. And there's nothing wrong with being future focused if you're still having gratitude, right? For the things that have happened in your past um, and retaining those. Because at the end of the day, that's, that's what life's about is you're, you know, we're all collectors of moments. That's this thing we call life. Um, so I, I think that's a, a big one. And then you hit on one other. You reminded me, you said regrets. So there's a really good book out there. Have you, have you ever read, Jason, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying? No, but I've heard you reference this book. <laughs> so again, and yeah. I don't mean to talk about like death and, you know, I know that could bring down the vibration or energy of this conversation, but it's actually a really positive, like inspirational aspiration. Yeah, book. go with it. Um, but the top five regrets of the dying, and, and you know, it's really about a, a nurse. Her name is uh, Bonnie Ware, Bronnie Ware, I believe, um, who spent her life basically with people in their final moments. And she chronicled kind of the patterns that she saw of like literally the top five regrets of people in their final moments. And I'll, I'll save you all of them. You guys can read the book or you know, I think she has some videos you could probably find online. But number one is like exactly what you just said. The number one largest regret of people in their final hours, right? Final steps, right? The end of the road is I did not live, right? A life that was mine, right? I spent my life living up to what others expected of me. And the way she frames it is, I wish I would have lived a life more true to myself, not the life others expected of me. And that guy is a think about it. Like if that's the biggest regret, it's exactly what we're talking about here. It's about going through life, pursuing or chasing as supposed to, going through life, trying constantly to meet expectations of others, going through life, constantly taken over viscerally, emotionally by fear of this and fear of that and fear of this and what will so-and-so think and what will so-and-so happen. And this fear literally allows us not to live the moments that we're in and not to maximize the time that we have. And I think the big mission, this is like, life, right? This is why, what I'm so passionate about. I get fired up. It's to wake up to that is happening. Like that's happening. Chasing a script, harnessed by fear, right? Getting stuck and not actually living your life fully in the moment right now. Guys, that's the game is how quick can we wake up ourselves, wake up other people to make that shift so we don't have that regret at the end, right? And, and obviously you see, I get fired up on all of that, but yeah. you know, that, that's, that's why, I mean, I, think, I yeah. think that's the mission for all of us, don't you? Absolutely, I do. Gratitude, you touched on that. I think that's so important, especially when it comes down to being happy in a moment. There's so many things that we can be grateful for and it's hard to be upset in a moment of gratitude. And Blake, the way that I share it with my friends is that, you know, there's taking things for granted and then there's gratitude, right? And of course, you're gonna take things for granted right now through this conversation. How many times has our heart beat, right? How many times have we blinked all the millions upon billions of cells inside of our body that are constantly transforming and renewing themselves? Uh, it, it's absolutely fascinating. So of course we have to take those things for granted. And then there's this universal scale where there's the gratitude, right? And naturally, like taking things for granted is going to be up high. All the universe wants to know is that you're just trying to, you're just trying to jingle that scale a little bit, right? And, and the more that you can get it towards balance, I think the better life that you're living. And on speaking in regards to having to be able to move forward and living that best life, that has to take a monumental mindset. So for people that are stuck, they don't even necessarily know that they're stuck or how they could get unstuck. Like, what are some of the things that they can do? Mental mind work that will help them move beyond some baby steps even. Yeah. Well, I think first and foremost, guys, you know, we're having a candid conversation here and Bo, Jason and I were speaking from just our own experience because we've been through it. We are going through it. Um, and I think we got to point out everybody is. So I don't think there's anybody that has like the answer. You know, I, I, I think it's a process and a journey. And, and that is what life is about, is that pursuit. Um, you know, so I can always do my best to share what has worked for me. And obviously, I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs primarily um, and a lot right all, all around the world. So have some references in terms of what has worked for other in individuals. Um, but let yourself off the hook. So like, don't feel guilty. Right. If, if you are in that place where you're like, man, I'm just stuck and I know I need to make a shift. Sometimes we have a tendency to even beat ourselves up more because we're in that state.
You guys got to let that go, right? So this isn't about guilt. Um, this isn't about making yourself feel worse. I think it starts number one with an awareness. Everything starts with awareness. You cannot shift or change something that you are unaware of. Um, and if you are aware right now that, hey, you're in a place where something isn't feeling right, like you're not you're not fully fulfilled. You're not energized, right? You're, you're not feeling like you're alive every day. Like you're running motions. Like, you know, there's something that needs to make a shift guys. Hallelujah. High five, right? Pat yourself on the back. You're aware, right? At least you're aware that, you know, there's something that needs to make a shift. Cause I, I think there's a lot of people walking this planet every day that aren't even aware, right? They, you know, I'm not going to go on a tangent of so many of the, the terms we hear in the mental health space today, you know, especially with pandemic and COVID on just the amount of depression and anxiety, right, and, and loneliness and all these things that people are feeling, which are valid, right? And there's many valid reasons why people are feeling this. I have a crazy theory, Jason, that, and I don't want to give any disrespect to like biology or physical imbalances and chemical. I know there's all of that and I'm highly compassionate, empathetic to people that have to fight through. I have people close to me that, that I've watched and helped fight through, but there's a part of me that also thinks that those feelings are a, our body, our intuition, our, our soul, whatever you believe in, like giving us an alarm that like, yo, you're not going down the path you're meant to like you're not doing what you're meant to like you're running emotion you're running a script you're chasing and stuck in this fear and your body's trying to say hey there's more for you right you were you were given talents and gifts and there's more for you um so not to go off a tangent but i i believe that right so i believe those feelings if you have them like hallelujah i think that's how our body works you have accomplished the first step which is an awareness Maybe this conversation is waking you up, right? So if you didn't have it before, maybe conversations like this, right, start to draw the awareness. Um, so I think to answer your question, the first step, right, it's not the whole journey, but I think the first step is just being aware that you actually want to make a shift. Does that make sense? I think it does. Now, <laughs> it's a complex subject. And before we start recording, I shared a quote with you, and it was, did you see the gorilla? And uh -huh. <laughs> But like, I, I've seen you on stage many times, right? And like I think many people, when they first see some keynote speeches and you're kind of getting a feel for what that person's like, no one has ever gotten my attention more than you did <laughs> after that keynote speak. Uh, I, I, was, I was blown away. And I actually, I've watched the video a number of times afterwards. And I'm like, what was going on with my brain? So is there obviously some type of connection or not a yeah, connection? Yeah, yeah like <laughs> there is for sure. Okay. The, I, I'm, I'm laughing. Uh, I, I love that conversation. Um, there's not a way I can answer your question without giving away the punchline. So I'm, I'm going to give it away. Uh, and you guys will have to go with Jason and I, I think, on right. this. I'll show, over the clip. Answer. I'll show the okay. clip before this broadcast and then maybe some people catch it in advance. You, you, you can. but it, 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 So here's the context, guys. So I, I, was, um, I, I learned about a, a, a study. It's a pretty popular study in psychology. Um, and you know the study is really, really simple. And you, you could probably just find this online if you YouTube it. If it and it has to do with um basketball five people on a screen passing a basketball okay some of them are in white shirts some of them are in black shirts and they're just passing a basketball like it's very very simple and the premise of the the the, the study or so people going through it think is just count the number of times that people are in one color shirt or passing a basketball and so you set this up and, and people focus and they just count as the players are passing a basketball now what we don't say and what they don't know is in the middle of the video a person wearing a gorilla suit, like a giant person in a full giant, very <laughs> furry gorilla suit walks, like doesn't run. This isn't a sprint. Just like swaggers in the middle of the freaking video and bangs his chest. Right. And then swaggers off. Right. And then at the, at the end, we just ask, okay, well, how many times did the people pass the ball? So I, I learned about the study and I read the results and I read Jason, like, well, people don't see their gorilla. And I, when I first heard it, I'm like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. I was, I remember the first time I tried, I was scared. I'm like, I'm going to try this in front of a live group. And I was nervous as heck because I'm in front of a live group. I'm like, what if this doesn't work? What if this doesn't backfire? And I did this on a giant screen, like projector, right. giant screen, hundreds of people, right? And since then, I have done that conversation or variation 
I don't know. I've done it dozens of times, hundreds of thousands of people. Jason, I've even done it on like three giant screens, probably a thousand people in the room translated in different language. Okay. (laughs) Just to give you an idea. And the majority of people in the room doesn't matter every time. Don't see the gorilla. Right. And you guys, the, the, the frame of it is really, is really a, a neuro, you know, a, a biology, biological is about bi- bio, biology, I, I guess a physical lesson. Right. But then also a lesson, how you apply to, I don't know what the right word is. I guess it'd be neurology. Right. So guys, when you explain actually the, the anatomy side of it, it's called selective perception. In other words, we, as in the way our literally eyes work and we process into a, a perception or a projection, we only see what we're looking for. Or said, said the inverse, we don't see what we're not looking for. And when I say see, I don't mean metaphorically or hypothetically. I mean literally, like we don't see, right, things that are right in front of us if we're not looking for them. And the metaphor is if we cannot literally physically see a giant freaking gorilla in right in front of us, well, what the heck are we missing every single day in our life? Right. And that's the mind trip, right? When all of a sudden you realize, well, how many freaking gorillas are right in front of me every single day that I'm just not literally seeing because I'm not looking for them or I'm unaware to even look for them. And you guys, that, that, and that could be a gorilla of, you know, a, a answer to, your problem. It can be the solution to what you're looking for. It can be the person, right, that, that you need to meet. It can be the opportunity that you've been praying for. It can be the, you know, answer to your question. It could be any of that. It literally could be in front of us every single day and we don't even see it. And tying in, so that's the the study and you guys can can Google it online, but the obviously connection, Jason, I think you're alluding to, And it goes back exactly to what we're talking about. So like, how do we make a shift? I said, well, it starts with awareness because awareness of how this works and you need to make a shift literally starts you looking for other answers. And the irony is many of those answers, they might already be around you. You guys, I don't want to get weird, right? Uh, Or too woo on this call, but we've all (laughs) been through it. Like we've all been through it. How many of you guys all of a sudden like had a paradigm shift and you were asking for something, you were thinking about something and, you know, call it manifestation or what you will, all of a sudden, like the answer came, you're thinking about a person, the person calls, you're thinking about a, you know, you need to find this, you get the answer that walks in two days later. Like that works in our life every single day. And, and people call it different things. Um, you know, the secret was a whole movie based about this, right? Law of magnetism. If you study positive psychology, you know, manifestation, right. Uh, or you can get into the actual neurology, the anatomy. Like I just said, the science of literally, when you start to look, you reprogram your reticular activating system to actually see different things that are right in front of you that maybe you were missing before. All of these are the same answers to start by being aware, conversations like this, mentors, the right information, starts to shift a perception where now you start to see or attract different things in different ways that can move you in the direction that you want. And that's maybe a more full answer, Jason, to what you asked earlier of like, oh, where do we start? It's such a big topic. To me, those are the steps. Awareness sounds overly simple, but has a deeper impact than most people realize. Literally have a chance to reprogram how we perceive things and allow us to see things that maybe aren't there or start to attract things that are the answers. You know, and you can accelerate that through, you know, conversations like this, communities like you're building, right? Like, you know, surround yourself with people that have answers, right? Or have experience or can fast track that. All of that stuff is going to help. Um, but I think over time, if you start looking for the answers, you're going to start to make those shifts and you start to think a little bit differently. You start to act a little bit differently. You start to act a little bit differently. You get different results, right? And you do that over time, life changes. So that's, that's what comes to my mind when I, I laugh every time about the gorilla because it, it freaks me out every time I do it. But that's the way our, that's the way our mind works. So here's what I see happening so far with this chat is that I don't know if I have everyone on stuck, but we're getting a wiggle at least on everybody. Everyone's getting a wiggle. Right. And some people, if not all, realize at this point that most definitely there's a script that we all follow from the day that we're born. And sometimes it works for us and sometimes it doesn't. And now I want to start getting to the living on purpose. And I think 
it is so fantastic that you decided to do a podcast because it shouldn't just be on a weekly call or a monthly call or every once in a while when it's a big event. You have a lot of knowledge to share. You're well-versed. You've put a lot of time into learning, evolving, growing, helping other people do the same. And to think that people can pretty much tune in daily to a Facebook Live or an Instagram Live or check out your podcast, A Live by Design, where, I mean, it's free mentoring, really. (laughs) People pay a lot of the money for the lessons that you talk about on there. And I'm guessing, well, you know what? I'm not going to guess. You're right here. So I should ask, who is this podcast tailored towards? What would be the ideal individual that would want to gravitate towards this fantastic material? I think you nailed it. Um, and, and it makes me excited, right? Just on you watching some of the things that are on that you distilled it right down to exactly the intention, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it's for people that um, are stuck and want to get unstuck or aren't necessarily fully stuck, but want to go to a new level, right? Want to break through and go to a new level. You know, I called it a live, right? By design for a reason. It, it's all about the pursuit of not just being alive, right? We're all alive, but like feeling alive every single day. And, you know, my personal philosophy is the only way we feel alive is we got to make that shift. It's not about supposed to, it's about being in alignment, right? With our meant to being in alignment with the things we're passionate about, the things we're great at, the things we excel at, really the reason that I think all of us were created to contribute in some way. So it's about that, right? It's about waking people up, creating awareness, giving tools like specific tactical, practical tools to maybe help us when we run into situations we all run into. Um, and yeah, you know, I hope it's making, uh, making an impact. It, it's, uh, it's been an awesome, awesome, awesome project that launched out a pandemic and it's awesome to get the feedback. And I, I read all the reviews. I, you know, read all the comments. I love when people, you know, send me messages or, or they tag me in their Instagram stories of their takeaways. And, you know, that, that's why I do it. Yeah. And I love the walk with me. I think that's such a great idea. What is it about walking that just stirs those juices for you? You know, it was a function of time. It was, it was really like, I want, I, I want to get a message out. Um, but you know, you know me, like my days are jammed. Like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in the middle of, you know, building a, a movement, right. I have, I have responsibilities in, in large companies. So like I'm building companies and businesses by day. So it really came down as just a function of time. Like I got ideas I want to get out. I'm already exercising every morning. It's part of my morning routine. Right. So I, I get up and I'm running right. Most days, you know, hiking most days, hills right behind my house. So I was already doing it, you know, and, and you know, you're out there moving great way to start a day. I got you know, an audiobook, a podcast in my ear. It's inspired thoughts just flow at that time of the day before I get into like, you know, back-to-back meetings. And, and I just speak from whatever's on my heart at the end of my run. So it just came from a, a function of, hey, I'm doing this already. Uh, I got inspired thoughts. Let me start sharing. I started doing a Facebook Live, started getting some traction. And yeah, you know, now it's kind of a, a series, not the, the entire podcast, but a series on the podcast. And uh, I love you've been plugging in. Thanks for the, the props. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, of course. And Blake, you know, there's a pie chart that I think everybody has in their life. And I'm just going to use one for like just influences on my life. And in my pie chart, there are a few people that have a sliver there in regards to the influence that they've had on me. And you most definitely have your piece of the pie. And I'd like to thank you for that. And if there's one thing that you taught me, it's putting a value on your time. And Blake, I know how valuable your time is and you taking an hour out of that time to speak with us right here on the Launchpad podcast, I think is so phenomenal. And I hope that the listeners appreciate it. I'm sure they do. You're out there, you know, building billion dollar brands. uh, And to think that you would take any time to have a chat with me is incredibly humbling. And thank you for sharing your life experiences with us. Oh, Jason, I appreciate it. I, I loved it. As soon as you sent the message, I said, I'm in. Um, it's been awesome to have parts of our paths uh, cross in the past, um, but it's awesome and exciting to see what you're doing. So congrats on the podcast. I love seeing you put all of your energy and gifts and talent, the impact you're making. And you know, it's just been a pleasure to be on. Hopefully we're able to make an impact and inspire some, some shift in our conversation today. Absolutely. And Blake, if people want to find you online, where do they go? 
I'm easy. So Blake Mallon on most platforms. So just at Blake Mallon, M-A-L-L-E-N on Instagram. Um, you can find me on my Facebook page, Blake Mallon dot page. Um, if you want to catch the TED talk, if you just Google Blake Mallon TED talk, you'll find it or shift the script.com. We'll send you right there. And, and Jason, I appreciate the support of the podcast, you know, alive by design on most podcast platforms. And, you know, I'm, I'm being literal. Like if you do plug in and you get some value from it, like send it my way. I, I read all my messages. I read all the reviews. Like that stuff keeps me going. That's why I take the time to do it. So even from this conversation, like hit Jason, right? Hit myself. Let us know what you got from it. It helps us get better. Thank you very much, Blake. And thank you for tuning in once again. You take care, be well, and love simply because you can. Hey guys, one last thing. I'm super excited that this new podcast, Alive by Design, just went live. You see, I designed the show to bring you inspired thoughts and fascinating conversations with the world's most impactful people, to provide transformative principles and practices to help you wake up, move toward your meant to, and feel fully alive. And I'd love for you to help me spread the word now. Simply subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on this platform right now. So if I've ever given you value, please do me this personal favor and go subscribe now. And if you found today's episode helpful in any way, make sure you share this with at least one friend today. You have the power right now to change someone's day. So send them a text message with a link to alivebydesign.com or simply copy and paste the link right from this podcast platform. Who's one person you know right now that you wanna see succeed, that you wanna see grow, that you wanna see feel more alive? Shoot them a text with your largest takeaway from today and be a light in their day. And if you were referred here by a friend, make sure you shoot them a text back and say thank you. I'd love to hear from you directly on what you got from today's podcast. So if you're up for it, drop by my Instagram at Blake Mallon and shoot me a DM. And as always, thank you for showing up. I'm grateful for you. And I hope our time together today in some small way helped you feel a little more alive. Until next time.